I'm Luke Schultes. I own and operate Viola Drone Services in Audubon, Iowa. Um, as a commercial business, we do uh, fungicide spraying, we do pasture spraying, we do cover crops, and we do some precision ag service work with um, digital filing, and we'll do crop scouting with uh, multispectral imagery and provide reports to our customers that way. We do a lot of our own acres with drones. We have for two, two to three years now. This will be our third year. Uh, we started out uh, buying a drone for fungicide spraying on our own acres, and then uh, we moved on to doing our, uh, once we got our licensing through and we really got uh, approved to, to utilize this machine, we started doing all our, our neighbors and some customers, and we still do commercial f fungicide, and we're moving into doing commercial cover crops, which is the topic of tonight. Uses for the drone are pretty, pretty broad and vast. I'm finding new uses for it every day. Um, we started out, like I said, with fungicide. Uh, we put on rye cover crop. We've put uh, red clover into standing soybeans uh, as a relay crop. Uh, we've used it for pre-emergence herbicide on beans. We've used it for putting biologicals on uh, corn and wheat, and it just goes on and on and on um, what we can use this machine for. It's uh, pretty versatile and cost efficiency is, is huge. You know, a machine like this that can cover our family farm costs 10% of what a, a sprayer would of, you know, a late model sprayer from one of the big manufacturers is, as a young farmer, is kind of outside my budget. So doing a, a machine that I can operate uh, on a smaller machine on smaller acres, I guess, is kind of the name of the game, and it's more efficient. My ROI and margin has been huge. Um, definitely a good investment so far. So, With management and usage of a drone, I would say the biggest thing is that half of your job is done before you ever get to the field. Uh, your planning and your field boundaries and your routes and everything else are going to be uh, critical. You're going to have to look at your wind pattern for the day and how you're going to fly the farm. Uh, your battery management and herbicide management is uh, a lot more of a challenge than I thought it would be. Um, it's very similar, like I tell farmers, uh, to running your own catch cart when you're combining is how I think about it. Uh, whether, whether you're full or not, when you get to the end rows, that, that grain cart's getting a dump of corn or soybeans. And the drone is much the same way, except I'm the catch cart and the drone is the combine. It's getting filled with a herbicide and it's getting a fresh battery, no matter what, every time it comes through. Uh, that definitely helps a lot. Uh, running half mile rows whenever you can or whenever it's applicable helps a lot. And then uh, just making sure that your mapping is accurate, uh, utilizing RTK, utilizing smaller surveying drones to examine the field before you get there, um, and making your boundaries as accurate as possible to reduce drift, to reduce overlap, and to keep, keep your product placement as good as it can be um, is definitely what it amounts to as far as planning and management of the drone. With licensing, it's, a, it's an uphill battle usually. The easy part is getting your drone pilot's license. That's a FAA part 107. And that is a test that you can take uh, at a ed center at like a community college. Uh, it takes a little bit of studying. It's not the hardest test in the world, but it's not the easiest test in the world. And anybody can go get one. Um, it's needed for just about any kind of drone flying you would do. For specifically for spray drones, you're gonna need to go get your 137, which is your crop duster's license, uh, 14 CFR part 137. And that process is ever evolving for drones. Uh, very recently it changed, but you're gonna have a lot of work to do with uh, developing a flight risk management plan and getting an inspection done on your knowledge and your machine and your business model. And I would recommend going through a consultant for that. And then lastly, in the state of Iowa, as what I can speak to, you need to get with idols and you need to get your uh, 11F aerial uh, commercial applicators license. You need to take the commercial applicators test. You need to be aerial certified as if you were flying a helicopter or an airplane. Um, those are the licenses. Um, insurance is a must. Um, you know, your typical business documents for commercial work are a must. And uh, I believe that's, and you have to register with IDOT.